Hey, I'm Troops. It's Taylor Littleton here with another video. We're back from SI. We're all kitted out in Siege merch. We're going to go into a video about Brava. Now, we're going to do a bit of a game show style thing, kind of. Well, you remember this song? Can I kick it? I can because I'm quite old. However, instead of can you kick it, it's can you hack it. We're going to look at every single Defender gadget that interacts with Brava. We're not going to look at gadgets that don't interact with Brava, but I will tell you which they are in a second. But anything which does interact with Brava, we're going to look at how Brava interacts with it and what happens when you do. So just excuse me for a second whilst I look at this monitor because I can't remember this off the top of my head, but these are the operators that don't interact with Brava. You've got Azami, Castle, Kavera, Clash, Doc, Frost, Goyo, Mirror, Oryx, Pulse, Rook, Smoke, Solus, Tachanka, Vigil, and Warden. Those guys don't interact with Brava. Some of them I thought they might do. I thought you could maybe hack Vigil's uh, cloaking device so he w was visible to drones, or I thought maybe you could hack Warden's glasses so when he uses his glasses, he still can't see through smokes or flashes, but you can't. Those operators don't interact. However, they can interact indirectly via another operator. So for example, Brava can hack Jaeger's ADS, and if smoke throws a canister somewhere near an ADS that's been hacked, it will zap that canister out of the air. However, directly, those gadgets don't interact with Brava. So anyway, enough about what doesn't happen. Let's find out what does happen. Wait until you see the mozzie one. It's like a game of 4D chess. So enough waffling. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, we're going to start with Alibi then. The two prisoners are here. This is Alibi herself. Don't get confused. We're going to hack the one on the left. We'll see what it does. We'll compare it to the one on the right. So the one on the left is now hacked, and it just makes the prisma disappear and then come back. If I now shoot that prisma, I get nothing. If Alibi shoots this prisma, oh, I'm using the wrong keyboard. If Alibi shoots this prisma, Alibi now gets pinged with her own prisma. If I shoot this prisma, obviously I get pinged. This one's normal. This is the hacked one. Again, you can see at the bottom with these uh, these little blue uh, blue lines. So yeah, Alibi gets pinged by shooting her own prisma, and so will every other defender as well. Onto a Rooney now. You can see we've got the two Surya gates either side. We'll hack the one on the left. That's now hacked. Wait for it to sort of pop back up as blue. And now you can see that's blue. I can now walk in and out of the Surya gate. No problem. As I get to it, it, it disappears just like it would if you were a defender. However, this one I can't get through. However, a Rooney, if she goes through her own Surya gate, now takes damage. Absolutely insane. Um, I'm not entirely sure if you noticed just now that one of the perimeters of the fence there, uh, sorry, of the of the Aruni gate was blue. I need to do a little bit of additional testing there. I'm not sure if it's if you've taken over one sir. You get, you know what? I'm going to wait 30 seconds on this clip. I'm going to reset this sir. gate. I'm going to see if the outside of that sir. gate changes color. I wonder if it's sort of alerts you that some of the sir. gates are yours and some aren't. At the moment, that's all red, which is what they normally look like. Just going to wait for this one behind me to reset. I should probably edit this out, but. We're here. So that is now active as my Surya Gate. And that has now changed again to blue. So that must mean that some Surya Gates are yours and some aren't. If I can keep that in frame, perhaps. If I watch the Surya Gate as a Rooney walks through the other one again, does it change colour as she walks through? It does. That must mean that it's red around the outside, but the blue lines must mean that one of the Surya Gates on the map is yours. Interesting. Okay, so the next one is Bandit. You can see that there's a, uh, a battery on the wall just here, and this wall's electrified. We get on the drone, hack the battery. The battery essentially just gets destroyed. It doesn't get taken over, because you can't really take over an electrified battery, but there you go, the Bandit battery's off the wall. I actually didn't realise until I tested this that it completely destroys the battery. Let's just do uh, one more while we're here. It can, I thought it disabled the battery. Although, obviously, having just seen that, and we'll do it one more time... It completely destroys the battery. Goes red, burns up, and pops. I think that's better than it being disabled, because if it was disabled, Bandit could perhaps maybe pick it up, but yeah. Can't hack Bandit, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, completely destroys a Bandit battery. We're on to Echo now, and I think this has to be one of the coolest interactions, to be able to take over a Yokai drone. So let's chuck the, uh, the drone down. You can hack ones that are on the floor or ones that are on the ceiling. I've thrown those down just to show the two differences there. Let's hack the one that's on the ceiling. That drops to the floor. Now if uh, Brava goes onto a cams, I now, as an attacker, it's absolutely wild. I now, as an attacker, have an Echo Drone that can still affect me, but of course, can also affect Echo as well. I mean, when did we ever think Echo would be getting... 
like shocked by his own yokai drone. I don't think we ever did. But anyway, yeah, you can do it on the floor. Or and obviously, as as we talked about before, any hacked ones, it's very obvious to see that it's glowing blue. It's one of the coolest ones, I think. So we're on to Ella now. I've not tested this before, so this is going to be the first time I see if you can hack an Ella mine. You can hack an Ella mine. If you want to. So, if I move in range of this one, but not the other one, it's not going off. Then let's have Ella move in range of the hacked one. And off it pops. Absolutely wild. <laughs> I know I've been shocked by that there, because I was in the radius of it. If I was stood back here, it wouldn't have shocked me, but... Uh, that's insane. What I'm going to just do quickly is just go on the drone, and because Al is now in range of this other uh, this other uh, Grismoth, once this is hacked, will it go off immediately, or does Al need to move? Let's find out. Oh, you need to stay on the drone, my bad. You need to stay on the rover drone. Alright, uh, hacked. Will that pop straight away? It does indeed. Thank you, Alla. That's how Alla interacts. Another one of the coolest interactions here is with Jaeger, and I have got a clip I'll play after this one just to show you, but... Um, Brava can hack the ADS. It'll beep to show it's active. That is now an attacker ADS. If Jaeger had a C4, or if Jaeger had impacts, or a smoke canister, and I'll show you the clip in a second of me throwing a C4. Well, actually, a big thank out there. Uh, thank out? A big thank you. Um, a big shout out, a big thank out, that's a new word. Well, a big uh, a big thank you to Goose Chanka and Levelhead who were helping me test and get these clips yesterday. So I'm going to show you the clip in a second of, uh, of Mute throwing a C4. Uh, you'll see in a second the ADS is actually here and Mute throws the C4 once it's been hacked. But that is now a uh, an attacker ADS, as you'll see. Doesn't catch the smoke. So, so cool, man. So I'll roll that clip after this and you'll see Mute catching a C4. Just bear in mind... I have tested smoke canisters, impacts, and even to Chanka's Shamika launcher, and the ADS catches all of those projectiles. I'm yet to uh, test everything. Like, if you were to throw a Grismot mine over the ADS, would it catch it? If you were to throw a, even an Echo drone, if you were to, you know, if you were Echo and you threw the drone over it, would, it, would the ADS catch it? I don't know. I haven't tested it all, but I can confirm impact C4, smoke canisters, and Shamika launcher balls, or whatever you call them with Tachanka. Anyway, roll that clip with Mutant the C4. You can see there now that that's a uh, an attacker gadget. So mutes here with the C4. Someone's going to start planting in the default spot here. And out comes the C4. Absolutely snagged by the ADS so quickly. It's insane. It's so good. We're on to Cade now, and we're going to do exactly the same test as we did for the bandit battery. Cade claws this side of the wall. I suspect it's going to interact exactly the same. It's going to blow up and go red. The Cade claw is gone. I mean, imagine having... I mean, it's much like Twitch, really, but... I'm going to Cade on the hatch here and just popping it from here is insane. What I'm also going to do whilst we're working on Cade is I'm going to throw a, C a C4 and not detonate it, hopefully. And I just want to see if the drone can hack a non-exploded C4 and what happens to the C4. It's going to do the same thing. So if you know there's a pre-placed C4 and you can't get to it or you don't want to have to run around the other side of the map to destroy a pre-placed C4, let's just say there's a you know pre-placed C4 here and you're on the top floor and you don't want to have to run all the way down here to get it, send the drone down, it'll destroy the C4. It's another interesting interaction. We're on to Cap Cannon. This is probably going to be one of the most influential things that you can hack along with Jaeger. Uh, Jaeger's ADS. We get onto the Cap Can track. We hack it. That's now an attacker Cap Can track. Track? Trap? Whatever. We can now walk through that, no problem. Insane. However, if young Cap Can here wants to walk through it, it's going to blow up on... Whoever gets the first clip of killing Capcan with a Capcan trap deserves a prize. But that's, that's certainly going to be an interesting one. Defenders, imagine that. You're running back to site. You're in a 1v1 and you go through a Capcan trap and die. Ouch. Moving on to Legion. As you can see, we've got a goo mine here. Jump onto the Kludge drone. Take over the goo mine. I wasn't sure whether a goo mine would work because it's not strictly electronic. But then I remembered that when you throw an a, uh, sorry, a Thatcher EMP near a goo mine, it does disable the goo mine. So maybe it is classed as an electronic device. But we can now see the goo mine. You can see it's highlighted for us. I'm looking on Legion's screen now and he can't see the goo mine. I, I can't believe we're about to goo Legion with a goo mine. <laughs> Absolutely unreal. So yes, Le <laughs> Legion mines, goo mines can be hacked. Onto Maestro and another one of the most Im impactful and influential things that you can uh, you can hack. Got the evil eye here. See, it's getting hacked. Hack success. And I go onto my cams. 
You can see now, as an attacker, I know I keep saying, as an attacker, I can't believe this, but as an attacker, I'm now controlling an evil eye. And I'm hitting Maestro with his own evil eye. Absolutely unreal. Another one of the most influential things that you can uh, you can impact. Interestingly, that when you ping it, it still comes up red. That's probably a bug. That probably needs to be changed. So when you ping it, it comes up blue. So you see it's friendly, perhaps. I don't know. Interesting, it's still red. But yeah, another really interesting interaction with Maestro. Cheers, Maestro. On to Malusi now, and this is another one that's going to be absolutely huge, and I'll explain why in just a second. Current Banshee goes off when we're near it. Do you remember when you couldn't shoot Banshees? You had to, like, walk up and punch them every time. Let's hack the Banshee. And we can see that's now hacked. Interestingly as well, the Banshee is now blue. Let me just move Malusi out of the way. The ping for the Banshee is blue. It must be a bug on Maestro's evil eye. I'll report that. So where this is going to be huge, let's just turn Malusi around in the other side and we'll have her just hit, hiding behind the bomb, looking as if someone's going to come down main stairs area. Where this is going to be huge is a Malusi player. You'd put that Banshee there and just go, all right, I don't need to worry about bottom blue until I hear that Banshee go off and then I've got to worry about bottom blue. However, we come down and we go, duh, 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 zap, wait for it to be hacked. And as it as we, we now won't go off as we go over it, and Malusi goes, well, I don't need to worry about that until... Oh, too late, Malusi. It's going to be huge for lurking and backstabbing, as they call it. Right, then, on to Mozzie, and this one's going to take a little bit of demonstration. So, for example, if I throw a normal... Excuse me, I've just absolutely caught my guts up. If I throw a normal drone on the floor, Mozzie throws his pest on that drone. Mozzie now has my drone. However... That is now a Defender Drone, although not if I hack it back. That is now back to an Attacker Drone. I can control it again. However, it does have the Honeycomb effect on the drone screen to show that it was once Mozzie's. So I now have that drone. What else you can do is Mozzie throws a pass on the floor here. I can go past with the Clutch Drone. I can go past and Mozzie now has control of my Kludge Drone. So Mozzie then goes on cams with this Kludge Drone that I'm now controlling as Mozzie and can take over the drone that was once pested. Pested? This drone was taken over by Mozzie with a pest, was then taken over by me with my Kludge Drone. Mozzie then pested my Kludge Drone, which should be red now, by the way. And that Kludge Drone then just hacked this to make it a Mozzie Drone again. Now, what I can do... I can put this clutch drone down and retake over the clutch drone. So that's mine again now. And whilst I'm here, let's take that drone back as well. It's like that meme with Spider-Man when everyone's pointing at everyone. So, like, uh, Mozzie and Brava have sort of an unlimited number of, uh, of interactions as long as Mozzie's still got pests, as long as I've still got charges on the clutch drone. Absolutely wild. Cheers, Mozzie. Okay, so we're on to Mute now. You can see that Mute's on his cams. There's a reason for this, and he's next to a Mute Jammer. If I go over the Mute Jammer, I'm going to get muted. However, chuck the Clutch Drone down. The Clutch Drone does is affected by the Mute Jammer if you go too far in range. Let me just show you that. It gets muted as on any other normal drone would. Just go and pick it up and chuck it back down again. If now I now hack that Mute Jammer, Mute, like, the, like attackers, can't use their phone in range of a Mute Jammer, Mute won't be able to either because when this becomes an attacker gadget. This should knock Mute off his off his, uh, off his his cams. So that now becomes an attacker cam. Now, it hasn't... Okay, interesting. What you can't see is on my other PC, my whole screen has just gone... You know when, when you stand in a Mute Jammer and your whole screen goes black and fuzzy? That's what's happening to Mute now. So if I come off the cams and try and go back on, again, Mute's just completely blocked out by the Mute Jammer. I, I'm on the cams, but I can't see anything. It just looks black and fuzzy. So it stops defenders going on cams as well. However, what that mute jammer will do is let's just say there's an ADS on the wall here. If that mute jammer is in range of other defender gadgets when it becomes an attacker gadget, so let's say there's a thorn razor bloom, a mozzie pest, and a ADS there on the wall, that mute jammer will mute these three devices. So rather than hacking all three, sometimes you can look at where the mute jammers are, potentially just hack the mute jammer and stop the other devices from working as well is a really interesting way of it working. Also, if you want to see something cool, because that mute jammer has been put down first, if I put down another mute jammer with mute, we've just muted a mute jammer, which is crazy. So because this jammer was down first, this jammer gets muted. However, let me just show you another scenario. If both jammers are down, let me move out of the way of it actually, because I'm going to be in range of that other jammer there. 
If we put, I'm sorry, I'm just putting mute jammers down behind you with mute, so you can't say anything at the minute. I'll turn around in a second. Sorry about that. If I now turn around, and if I hack one of the mute jammers, the mute's main mute jammer will be classed as down first, because this is classed as like a new gadget going onto the floor when it becomes an attacker gadget. So if there's two mute jammers next to each other, and you only hack one, Mute's original gadget on the floor will overpower the one that's just been hacked. Unlike over here, where this one went down after this one. Are you with me? But yeah, and again, more cool interactions with Muse. Onto Thorn now, you can see we've got a Razor Bloom here. Let's throw the Clodge Drone down. Hack the Razor Bloom. Again, another cool sort of Capcan-like interaction. I now don't need to worry about that. However, if Thorn uh, saunters up to it, just swap keyboards. Uh-oh. Imagine killing a thorn to a thorn trap. Unreal. Okay, so onto the Thunderbird and the Kona Station. This is an interesting interaction, actually. If I just shoot myself in the leg with Thunderbird quickly. As we know, attackers can use Kona Stations. So hacking it wouldn't really do anything. So when it comes to Kona Stations, it's like Bandit Batteries and Cave Claws. It blows up, turns red, and gets popped. It just completely destroys the Kona Station. You've got to look at it however you want to think about it, really. If, it, if an attacker went past it, it'd be able to heal. But if it's nowhere near an attacker, then you can just get rid of the Kona stations. Cheers, Thunderbird. On to Valkyrie then, and this is quite a simple one, but a really effective one. We've got the black eye camera up there on the on the wall. We hack it. That camera now becomes an attacker camera. And if I go onto my cams, you can see now I'm on the Valk cam. I'm just gonna go on the cams with Valk. And there are no Valkams on the cams with Valk. Now, what's going to be interesting with this, with Valkyrie, is Valkyrie is such a powerful operator in higher elo because of the communication and coordination that I don't... I would imagine that maybe you don't see Valk get banned as much now because attackers want Valk to put the cameras out. If you then bring an IQ and a Brava and you can find the Valkams and you can hack them rather than destroying them and use them to your own advantage. So, like, let's just for, say, for example, um, we're on the right map, actually. Let's say Bank Lobby. I do apologize about the delay here. I am just going to run upstairs quickly. Bank lobby, right? You'll have a, a Valkyrie sometimes will throw a camera um, up here on this live, for example. Imagine as a defender thinking, oh, that's great, right? There's no way they're going to find that. And then as an attacker, you've got IQ outside here with a, you know, scanner up going, right? There's a belt cam here. You send the cold drone in from the front door, hack it. And now you have an overview of all of lobby, regardless of a drone or not. I think it's going to be really useful to pair up with our IQ to know what to hack and where, but... Yeah, maybe not banning Valk as the play now. So we're on to Wamai now, and this is a really interesting interaction, and I think you might actually see more Wamai played because of this. So the Wamai disc is on the wall, much like everything else. We point at it and we hack it. Now, that will catch Defender Gadgets. So Wamai has got impacts here. So if I run around this corner and throw an impact at that Wamai disc, it gets dragged up by the Wamai disc, which is insane, right? However, what's interesting about Wamai, and I'm going to show you a clip of it after this with a C4, is that unlike an ADS that completely destroys the C4, if Wamai comes in this room here and places the Wamai magnet up there, what's going to be interesting is if you try and put the, you know, the default plant on bank here, and there's an ADS up here like in the previous clip, someone on defense here throws a C4 to try and kill the guy who's planting, that ADS will just grab that C4 out of the air. However, if it's a Wamai disc, the Wamai disc will grab the C4 and it will auto detonate. The same with a smoke canister. It'll grab the C4 up to here. It'll do what it does when it grabs objects, you know, the noise like we just saw outside, and then it'll still blow up. So even if you've got an attacker plant in here, they're still going to get some damage from that C4 or from that smoke that gets grabbed by the now hacked attacker Wamai disc, if you're with me. So that's a benefit over the ADS because even if that is hacked, the C4 will still detonate, the smoke will still detonate. An interesting interaction, which means you might see on sites like this, less Jaeger and more Wamai, perhaps. Cheers, Wamai. And we'll see how the hacked Wamai disc reacts to C4. So when Mozzie throws this up there, you can see that the disc drags it up. And the C4 then auto-detonates once the disc has done what the disc needs to do, so to speak. And that's the same with every timed uh, sort of explosive or, or smoke canister. Um, it'll get dragged up and then auto-detonate after the disc has stopped dragging it. So there we have it. That's Brava and what she interacts with. However, what I will say, I haven't talked about secondary gadgets, but Brava can also hack bulletproof cams 
and proximity sensors and they work exactly the same way the other round the other way around attackers can then get onto bulletproof cams or if a defender goes in the range of a prox mine it'll go off there's going to be some absolutely wild interactions forthcoming in year eight season one and i can't wait for it for those of you who don't know if you've got this far i also stream on twitch every monday wednesday and friday from 8 p.m uk time and name on twitch is at the bottom of what you can see now it's exactly the same as youtube come and say hello other than that, I think that's probably enough running through Brava for now. I'll get into a detailed guide about how to play her another time. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!